Welcome back to the Shot of Business Central, where we bring you the latest and greatest Business Central news. Today we've got a couple little updates for you. First of all, the minor update 20.4 was released, and in it there's 11 platform and 39 application uh, updates. There's also two feature changes. First one is current user support for the SMT, SMTP email connector. Uh, which is where you can now use SMT protocol to send emails from Business Central with the SMTP connector extension. Say that five times real fast, SMTP. You did well. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> uh, second feature change is the Shopify prospects get a great first run experience. What it is, I don't know, nobody really knows, but according to Microsoft, you can get you can create an onboarding experience that depends on where the Business Central sign in sign up originated uh, the origin is defined as the sign up context which is available in version 20.3 and later ken do you want to add to that one no it's pretty good <laughs> you did well all right great uh let's see what else we got here oh avalara has been acquired by vista equity partners for eight billion dollars um i don't expect much to change I'm hoping that when Vista Equity Partners comes in, maybe they can you know fix a couple things that happens to companies that experience rapid growth, where like uh, their support. I know Avalara has support all over the world. Sometimes it could be a little bit difficult. But yeah, I think you know Avalara was a publicly traded company, uh, so <clears throat> you know I think like any other publicly traded company, there's a lot of scrutiny on performance and metrics and and pressure to live up to, to shareholder expectations. Mm -hmm. So this is a private equity company that's purchased. So it's no longer, uh, I assume, Public. gonna be a publicly right. traded company. It hasn't closed yet. Um, but when it does, right, they, they, they'll be able to maybe do things a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, and and, and to, to be sure that they're, you know, focusing on long-term goals and objectives instead of short-term profitability and meeting Wall Street's expectations. Um, but yeah, at this point, nothing, it's not, um, no major changes expected. Still, you know, and, and the Vista Equity Group, I think this will be one of their largest mm -hmm. uh, holdings. They have other technology solutions as well. Um, but uh, I think I heard it, it might be twenty five percent of their entire uh, portfolio. Yeah, so it's a it's a good it's a good uh, you know it's it's not like uh, Avalara got taken over by some other <laughs> sales tax software company and yeah. and everything's going to have to get more migrated yeah. to another tax solution or something. Yeah, um, it's just uh, just different owners, hopefully with maybe with some different objectives. So maybe there will be some changes in six months or a year. Yeah. Um, but that's uh, to be determined. But nothing major kind of expected. Yeah, it really. sounds like the focus is going to stay on tax. You know what I mean? So right. they're not going to deviate from it. And they're just going to do what they do. Like you said, not worry about outside pressures from shareholders and, and meeting prices and Wall yeah. Street and whatnot. So um, only thing, other thing I got on my list is just want to let everybody know the Business Central Office Hours. Uh, September 6th is the next one. It's on Power Automate and Power Platform Integrations. Always fun. Writer Brian Taylor. <laughs> and what are the office hours? In case someone hasn't it's really... Just, it's just uh, Microsoft personnel talking about uh, or educating users as well as partners on Business Central features. Okay. That's all that it is. Good, they just cool. pick a different feature, different whatever, and go over it and talk about it. So. Okay. And those are live events? They are. They also have an office hours recordings page. We'll put both the links in the show notes. Awesome. But, yeah. What about you? Got anything else, Ken? Yeah, uh, you know, we got this fall's coming up. It's late August here, uh, and we've got um, two conferences coming up, Dynamics Con in San Antonio, September 14th through the 16th, and then also the uh, Dynamic User Summit in Orlando, Florida, October 10th through the 13th. So two, two options now for user conferences. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the numbers look like, how many people are going to be attending each mm -hmm. one. I've looked at the agendas and the, you know, the um, sponsors and everything for yeah. both. And, you know, both are going to be be good shows with lots of good content and yeah. um, Let's be honest. They're competing against each other. 
Absolutely. <laughs> so we want to see who wins, as most people do. At least I do. I want to see who wins out. Yeah, it it's it, it seems as if uh, everyone would be, probably be better served with one yes. user conference with one large group yeah. where everyone can plan on that and, yeah. and um, have access to the same content. Yeah. But we'll see, right? It's good, right? Because you have the established established show, you know, and then you've got the new, the upcomer with the, the, the superhero branding and Dynamics Con trying to take out the, uh, the old establishment. So it's, it, it makes for good drama just to see who, uh, yep. who wins. Yeah, on the other hand, I mean, if there's multiple user conferences, I guess more well, options is. for people, right? Maybe you don't like San Antonio. Yeah. Maybe you don't, or you don't like Orlando, and you. I don't know, I'm just. Be nice <laughs> if they work together. They work back to back months. You right. Know? That makes it hard. Yeah. I. I, I was. I, I'd be really curious to see if are there are there any users who are going to both. Right. Probably because how much not. could the stuff be different from the, the first or second? Right. Yeah. Right. You're. Uh, You've got some sessions as well at, at Dynamics Con? Uh, Dynamics Con, yeah, in San Antonio. Um, so, yeah, going to kind of check that out, see what that's all about. That'll be my first time there. Uh, it's actually only the second annual D Dynamics Con conference for Business right. Central. So um, I think they've had a, may, may, may have had a couple other smaller events. Um, but, yeah, going to check it out and... I'll have a full report for everyone uh, at the you know as, at the uh, end, late September podcast. Yeah, maybe we'll get a recording of it or whatnot too. How it went, yeah. Um, so also in the news, just an update. Everyone, last month we went through the 2022 Wave Two new features. I think there were like 33 or so Something like that, yeah. new features coming out with with the next release in October. And I did just go out there and check, and as of late August, uh, you cannot yet create a new sandbox with the new version 21 or 2022 Wave 2 release yeah. yet. So I think that is scheduled for September. Yeah. But I did want to go out there and just check it out to make sure it wasn't there yet. And then the last update I had is uh, not maybe not so much of a, an update uh, as it is a feature change. So a few, I don't know which release it was, one or two releases ago, um, they, they came out with a new feature from the item record called item references. Or you may have noticed that the what used to be called item cross-references is now called item references. So we had some questions from people like, why did this change? The official word, if you go out there and look at the the help or online documentation for it is that Microsoft wanted to be able to provide longer item like mm -hmm. reference numbers. The old one was like 20 or 30 characters. This is like 50 characters. I'm not sure exactly why they couldn't have just increased the character <laughs> length to 50 and keep it the same exact table, but it's actually a different like tables. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that because for a while it was a you could you could enable it through the feature management and say okay yeah I want to start using the new item references in version 20 it's it's there like the yeah, item cross references that you're used to seeing from the NAB days those that's gone replaced with item references and, and so what's noteworthy is if you have existing um, extensions or mods or customizations or other functionality tied to those, you, you're you going to need conflict. to review that and make sure it still works and maybe re-engineer um, your solution or some code um, to, to reference that new item reference. So. Uh, I'm with you. They should have just changed the original code to allow for 50 characters or whatever. Right. Yeah, I don't see any reason they couldn't have done that. Yeah, there, there. You know, there must have been some other reason. Um, yeah, there has to be. Yeah. But because, because, because again, you, ha you, you know, usually Microsoft does a good job of considering the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of users and companies out there using versions of this that are going to be upgrading. So try not to change the structure of what's already there. Um, but unless you can do so in a you know less yeah. 
invasive way. But, you know, it happens from time to time. Along these same veins, another one is the sales pricing functionality, right? Where they've changed, you now have sales price lists and purchase price lists. So if you are upgrading to Business Central, uh, you do have to pay attention to that. And how you're, how does it take your current sales prices and purchase prices and discounts and transition those into the new price list structure? So those are a couple things. We've talked about that a couple times before, but item references is, is another one that people need to be aware of. So Awesome. That's your PSA, public service <laughs> announcement. WTTW. <laughs> All right, so that's about it then for the, for the news? Yeah. All right. It. Next up, we've got the major interview with uh, Ryan Sullivan. So everybody stick around and stay tuned.